Hello there, I'm Julie Davis for Blick Art Materials. Thank you for coming to our workshop today, and I'm going to show you how to make insoluble paintings. Now, have you ever stopped to think about how closely art and science relate to one another? So close, in fact, that Albert Einstein called them branches of the same tree. Well, this project is a creative way to demonstrate the scientific concepts of insolubility and density, along with the artistic elements of color, shape, and form. Now, density is the term used to compare the mass of the same volume of different substances. In the art materials world, we have basically two types of paint. We have oil-based paint and we have water-based paint. In these cups, I have the same volume, basically, of each, but if I mix oil-based paint into water-based paint, you'll see that the oil-based paint immediately rises to the top. The molecules repel each other and do not mix with one another. So this is the basic concept that we're going to be using in our insoluble paintings today. Oil and water do not mix. When you put them together in one piece of artwork, you get swirling, mixing colors that are constantly changing and constantly moving. You can move them around with your fingers. This is almost as much fun to touch and to move as it is to make it. You can also turn them upside down and allow gravity to do its thing with it. Well, we start out now with a laminating pouch. This is a laminating pouch from 3M, quite inexpensive. It's pre-sealed on one side. These laminating pouches are intended to go through laminating machines, but today we're just going to use a regular household iron preheated to a silk setting. We're going to start by creating a seal, a border, on three sides. So I will take my iron and I'm going to just run it along one edge. The pouch has a frosted look right out of the package. But as you seal it, you'll notice that it turns clear. And this is how you know that you're getting a good seal. Seal three sides, including the pre-sealed side. Now these don't have to be straight edges at all, obviously. But they do need to be sealed completely. So when you're finished, you'll hold it up and examine all edges and make sure that you don't have any of that frosted look heading out to the edges. This looks good. Next, we need to consider what's going to go inside of our pouch. Now, if we just put the paint in here, the liquids will float from one side to the other. But if we put an obstacle, some shapes inside, that'll give something to slow down the paint and have it run around the obstacles. But we need to find something that won't absorb the paint and the oil and won't cause any sharp edges that might puncture the pouch. This is print foam. Print foam is made for, of course, printmaking. It's coated on either side so that the ink will release very easily. For our purposes today, that means that it won't absorb the paint or the oil inside the pouch. Now you can pick up your scissors and just start freeform cutting designs into the print foam, or you could take a permanent marker, like this Blick permanent marker that I have here, and start drawing designs onto the print foam. Now the ink will take a little bit longer to dry because it's sitting on a coated surface, so you'd want to give it just a minute before you started to cut it out with scissors. As you can see, it cuts very easily, but I already have some shapes cut out, so I'm going to set that aside and bring forth the shapes that I've already cut out. And I've gone ahead and done the back side of these shapes as well. All right, now it's time for the fun part, the juice, the liquids that we're going to put in the, in the pouch. I'm going to use a water-based paint today, and I've chosen to use Blick Liquid Watercolor. Now, Blick Liquid Watercolor comes in a glitter version which, as you can see, is very thick. 
it's almost gel-like in consistency and it's absolutely glittery gorgeous. I've chosen to use two colors in my pouch, but you want to be careful about which two colors you choose to use. Take a look back here at the color chart if you would for a second. If you choose two colors that are close to one another on the color wheel, for instance, I've chosen something in the range of this blue violet here, and then a magenta, which would be closer to the red violet over here. They're close to one another, so they'll look really good together. But if you select perhaps a green that's over on the other side, you could get a brown that just really wouldn't be quite as attractive. So keep that in mind when you choose your colors. Now for the oil part of this painting, I'm going to use plain old baby oil. Just to save time, I have gone ahead and pre-measured the paint into plastic cups. If you do this, you'll want to use plastic because paper cups will absorb the oil. This step is best done with a partner if you're doing it for the first time. It's best to have someone help you. So I've done it for a few times. I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. Open up your pouch just about as wide as you can get it to go. Let's start with the baby oil and we're going to pour it down into the bottom. It really isn't cr critical, the ratio of paint to oil, but I say a good place to start would be two tablespoons of oil to three tablespoons of color. Try and get this way down into the bottom of the pouch. If you do get any paint or oil up along the edges where you're going to make your seal, you can always take a paper towel and wipe them away they might affect the seal. Okay, now that I've got my liquids down in the pouch, I'm going to insert my foam shapes. And I wish that I could tell you that you could place these things and they would stay exactly where you want them to stay. But let's face it, you're working sideways. They're going to probably just fall where they fall. So kind of randomly place them throughout the entire pouch. All right, it's time for the final seal. And I have a stack of corrugated cardboard pieces right here that's gonna give me some height. And the nice thing about this is it's going to allow gravity to work with me and it's gonna keep the paint down here away from the final seal. I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm going to work up as much air out of there as I possibly can. You can have some air in there but large bubbles could pop. So let's get as much air out of there as we can. I also have a little paint there, but I'm gonna go ahead and seal this because I think that's gonna be just fine. So I'll bring my iron back again and make that final seal. And before we turn it again, let's inspect. Looks like everything's sealed just fine. To make sure, let's turn it slowly and watch as the paint flows. If we don't see it trying to escape somewhere, we know we're good to go. And this appears to be a really good seal. So let's go ahead and put it on a white background because that's what makes it most visible. And start to move your paint around. There you see. There is your insoluble painting. Isn't that a lot of fun? Okay, now just a couple options. To finish a piece, I like to put it inside of a ready mat on top of a board. That just gives it a nice finished look and also adds it some support. So when you do go to make your, your finger impressions here, it gives you a nice rigid board. You'll also notice with this piece right here, that I've gone ahead and taken my permanent marker and drawn a design now right back over the top of my insoluble painting. You could create your own border this way with a permanent marker as well. All right, well, once you've done one, I will tell you they are so much fun, you are going to want to do more. So get started on your insoluble paintings. Thank you again so much for attending our workshop today. I'm Julie Davis, and if you'd like to see this in printable PDF format, just go back to our website. 
We've also got a complete materials list there available for you and the national standards for visual arts education as they relate to this project. Thanks again for coming.